Hello and good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. See you, Sean. Jan, what's up? Good to have you here. Paul Tranny, going to dive into today's masterclass, which is all about uh, curiosities and oddities. Basically, it's all about blending images together and uh, just having some fun. So uh, that is the plan. And again, most of Photoshop is centered around these principles. Al, thank you so much, Michelle. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for saying hello Hamza as well out there I see you fantastic um, so yeah hopefully everybody's doing well uh, thank you so much you're so kind Thundercats are go so yeah let's get this party started yeah I'm not wearing black for once I usually do it to hide the mic but I've also done some arranging and um, yeah painted down here and all the things so um, I'm, I'm feeling good Gonna put some more art on my walls and stuff like that, but uh, let's go ahead and dive into uh, what I have on my okay on my desktop. So there we go. Let's switch over. And here we are. Thank you so much for your patience. Cool. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're too kind. Office looks good. Hello, Froja. Good to have you. <clears throat> so again, just like old-fashioned oddities, just had a friend that moved uh, just above one of these like curiosity-type shops that just has have interesting things, right? I'm gonna do some animal oddities, right? Um, kind of like this punk rock uh, rat. Oh, just kidding. But it's going to be more like oddities and curiosities and things like that is the idea. You can see them right here. So it should be pretty fun. Old world oddities. We can go to this eBay store. But again, just some like really unique things. Oh, look at that. It's a lady with a beard. How weird. Not a big deal. Creepy vintage demon. Yeah, we're not going to get too, uh, too freaky. We're not going to go there. Okay, but we're going to have some fun. It's kind of like if you ever saw, like, um, if you've never seen, say, a baboon before, like you have here, you'd be amazed. If, like, remember seeing this as a kid? We're tapping into some of that energy, right? Or an armadillo. Isn't it crazy these are actually creatures that exist now today, right? So it's just kind of wild if you ask me. Uh, just so you know, what I did is I've downloaded these off of Adobe Stock so we can see these images all right in here. Space oddities would be fun, too. Um, yeah. Ooh, Carol has a wooden Ouija board now. Wow. That's wild. So anyways, you can download those. Remember, I just have this set to free. So that's all I did. Free armadillo. I can find most things out there, right? So it works easy enough. Um, and then once I have them all downloaded, I put them all in a folder, as we can see right here, just called odd. And they're not even that odd. We're just going to have some interesting creatures, right? Again, just a bird and stuff like that. But we're going to pair some of these up together, and it's going to be fun. So once you have that them all in one folder, you go to File, Scripts, and then you go Load Files into Stack. So that's how you can get all of those images in one PSD very easily. And not only that, I have all the reference numbers for those actual files in case I need them, right? Free is my prize range. I can get it the same here. So uh, from there, I'll just start taking some of these images and uh, we'll still have, I still need to establish a background and do some different things, but we could just click remove background for a lot of these. So look at that. Oh, magically, it has removed the background for that armadillo. So this is so easy. I'm into it. It does get more complex. Good morning, Daniel. Good to have you here. Gets more, the images get more complex. Like we could see what this will do because it'll easily probably do this like chicken. Okay, we could just do remove background all day long on a lot of these. Boom, boom, boom. But I'll get to some, some more complex backgrounds. But let's do the easy ones first. Boom, boom, boom. There we have it. Right, it's already knocked out like six images, seven images. Take this one, for instance. Let's try this on this um, baboon. Remove background. Oh, hey, did a pretty good job overall. 
Yeah, you could stack them that easily. So again, uh, lo scripts load files into stacks. Um, you can also do it from bridge because bridge is a great way to just uh, kind of peruse all your images. And then from bridge, it's a matter of selecting them and loading them in, into a stack as well. Uh, Baboon is deep in, is he deep in thought? <clears throat> Buddy, what's going on behind those eyes, huh? What's going on back there? What are you thinking? He's just so weird. He's so interesting. Can't you see him just like on a pedestal? Maybe it's a stuffed animal. I don't know. I don't know. It's getting weird. Some taxidermy stuff, right? But again, that's all we need to do. It's just our magic. Remove background button. This one's a little more angry. Might not even use it. Hey, it's okay. We'll delete it. But we'll, ooh, shoot. We'll um, pair some of these animals and we want to kind of like meld them together. So I've tried to pick the most unique ones. Um, he is side eyeing some weirdo. You know, it's all weird is just all relative. Weird often just means new. Like, oh, I've never seen this before. And I think if you went to an oddities like curiosity shop, you know, it's like imagine a traveling circus kind of going around, like having this interesting thing in a jar. <laughs> Um, you know, it's probably just an animal you haven't seen and they're like, hey, from wh where I'm from, you're the weirdo. <laughs> you know, oh geez. So yeah, give me a second and as I just hit remove background on all of these. Um, yeah, that's all I'm doing right now. Boom, boom, boom. Usually what I'll do in these cases is I will um, have these all named and I'll put them in my own library. So I'll end up with the library of uh, assets. Here's the baboon back again. Again, I think he's like just super interesting, which is why he's there. All right, cool. And I'm curious as to what is jumping out to you. Let me know what animal you think is uh, might be unique to kind of start with. Um, would love to uh, get your opinion on uh, uh, what direction I should take this. Right, and again, some of these will just use the face, but we're gonna meld a couple animals together, see what we could do, right? Just have some fun with it. Like we take this one, let's remove this background, right? Not only is it, it's not really removing the background per se. Let's go back here, just add a gradient. Sensei is getting so smart. It's getting all grown up, huh? Let's pick some maybe some of these maybe a sepia tone you know we want like some some uh sort of interesting background that we can work on later okay so there we go here's this guy look at that did such a good job cutting it out did it actually get oh in the tail no it didn't quite get right in there so we can take care of that real fast uh, white tiger, people are digging the armadillo. I agree 100%. Um, baboon, I'm into it. But again, just using the refine edge tool right in here, just kind of grab that part of the tail. It also just switch to the brush. Um, I think it's funny the default is to add to paint. Because a lot of times what you're doing is you're subtracting. So just hold down that option key. Let me make the brush smaller. And we'll get right in there and we'll just clean it up a little bit. Okay, that's good because we might not even use it. We'll click OK, call it a day. Boom, boom, boom. Right, for any of these, we'd have some fun. I can convert this to a smart object. You know, if we want to have an interesting... Um, odd looking creature we could take anything and start distorting it right so we take this and we'll just go into say puppet warp for instance right so now we can just add pins wherever we want and maybe even add a pin down here and all of a sudden we can like stretch it out and already it's looking quite odd right so let's kind of start with that i have sort of the basis of a body from there we can take um, 
an armadillo shell. So give me a second. Let me grab this one. Here's our little armadillo, right? We'll just do a command J to jump it. We will convert it to a smart object to protect it and uh, start having some fun. Um, oh, there's a little bit of fringe on the edges. Yeah. He's also missing feet and various things. I don't even know how much of this animal actually like still um, that I'll end up going with. So there it is. So once we have it in a smart object, we can always rename it if we want to. Our... Okay, what's another name for armadillo? I think it has, it might have two names. It's interesting that some animals are called, there might be slight variations in the animal, um, but it's very much a regional name for something. So I don't know if an armadillo has a different name. But what I am doing is I'm taking this. In fact, I'll take a lot of these since I'm not using a lot of these layers. Command G, group them together, and put it up at the top. And uh, yeah, we'll get to work. Oh yeah, this is so nice. Look at this one. Oh, that's going to be good too. Road. Oh, those are actually watercolors. Don't need those. Here's our fun horse. Hedgehog. Oh, and then we discover this, which is fascinating. It's like, oh. Yeah, I don't know an armadillo. Another name for an armadillo. I guess I could Google it. Um, but nonetheless, look at all these animals, right? You guys already know, you probably already know this, but I'm just glad you're hanging out with me. I'm just glad you guys are here. Um, but this is kind of cool. Like, this is a case where it's like I have a, so many animals on one layer. Um, I can jump in and use the object selection tool. And uh, then we can turn this on. We can say object. This is one way to do it. We could do object finder or we just use our straight up lasso. So object selection tool, I could jump in. And we'll see, we'll get varying levels of uh, cleanliness with this. Boom, but look at that. No, I think we're pretty darn good. Um, we can go in and let's try to subtract this shape right in here. Bingo, subtracted it. How easy was that? Uh, and then I can copy it and paste it and put it on another layer. Okay, so there that is. There's our little wildebeest or whatever. Texas speed bump. Um, let's take it to this next level. You ready for this? General Kenobi, what's up? <clears throat> oh, a zebra is what I'm missing. Thank you so much for that. Half, uh, half zebra, half lion, half elephant, half, hip, half hippo. That's what I'm going for. Just some interesting stuff like that. But we definitely need it. Is the zebra was, was the zebra on that uh, layer, by the way? Let's type that in. We could always get a better, cleaner image if we want to. There's our zebra. A couple of zebras. like that one. That even looks almost a little fake, but nonetheless, let's take a look. Oh yeah, here's our zebra, boom. But check this out. So I'll just take this stuff, and we, we have some other, we have some duplicate layers apparently. Let's get rid of this one. Let's just take that, put it in there. Okay, back in here, we have this Adobe stock layer. I'll select it. Um, and give me a second. Object selection tool, turn on object finder. And it goes through and we'll start highlighting these. But I should be able to right click and mask all objects. Right click, mask all objects. Man, bear, pig, perfect. Let's just get, let's just get creative, guys. I, I swear, there's too, life's too serious. Let's have fun, it's right away. Convert to, oh, it's mask all objects. That's what I want. We'll click right there. We'll just see what happens. This is no hands mode. This gives me a chance to drink my, my wonderful coffee. Welcome, everybody. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. Hyena's a great animal. Even if we just took an animal and we started distorting it with puppet warp, that's like half, half of our job, right? But we want to have some fun with it. It's kind of like I'm thinking of a traveling circus, if you will, where some crazy taxidermist decided to put an armadillo uh, and a, a giraffe and a, a tiger together. All right, so it looks the same. Obviously it isn't, because look at down over here. I'm not, cr let's turn this off. But it actually gives me these folders, right, that has that selection. So we could kind of play a little guessing game. There it is. Option click. Let's get, actually zoom out. Look at that. Look at this one. Look at that one. So that's what it does. Um, personally, what it really needs to do is it needs to take that same layer um, and it just needs to go in all of these folders, by the way. So as I drag it into that folder, it'll, it'll appear out of nowhere. You ready for this? We'll drag it into this folder. Bam, there it is. You get the idea. All right, cool. So anyways, this is uh, pretty good, but you still have to go through this whole manual process. I really wish that layer was duplicated in all those folders. But anyways, that's how that works. Command J, put it in this folder. Oh, it's that one. You get the idea. Cool, cool. Ooh, this is a fun animal. I don't know what it is, but that's that's the perfect, you need a basic animal shape, that's this one right here. Okay, but you have this problem where you're like, oh, I just don't need this folder and all this stuff. What I can do is I can take this all, uh, and I should be able to drag it on down to this layer. Just click and drag it, and sure enough, that's on its own layer, and then we can ungroup this as well. So we now have this like a little bit cleaner, but basically it's on its own uh, layer and just like, it's gonna be easier to work with because we're into this animal. I don't even know what you are, you're cute. Okay, give me one second. I'm gonna just work through this. Now that we know what we're doing, I'm just gonna move fast, dropping these in here, having a heck of a time. Oh yeah, put that one in there. Jump it a couple more times. I might need to change the layer size, but this is my job as a designer. All right. We are almost there, bear with me. Move these up here. I think we're good. I think we are good. All right, fantastic. Turning that off, you can see all my animals that have appeared. Great, grand, wonderful. All right, welcome everyone. It's a new, is that what it is? A, or you just, is it just a little deer? No, this is, yeah, maybe it is just a deer. I'm sitting here thinking it's an exotic animal. And again, exotic is relative to where you live. But let's take all those. We'll take all of these. And this, these will be our, like a new animal set right in here. So we'll just group those together. Animals. Nice thing is you only have to do this once. And you guys put those in your library. Have some fun. Here's my other animals just in group one, but now we can start playing with these. We'll select it. Um, convert it to a smart object. And now we have a couple animals to work with. Here's our armadillo. There you are, buddy. Our like wildebeest and then even this uh, monkey profile as well. 
cool. So we got some options. Let's blend some of these together. We'll get something interesting going on. Let's say, for instance, this armadillo. Bring it down. Kind of like the shape of this a little bit better. I think it's going to match up a little bit better if we combine this armadillo with this deer. As a starting point, we'll get that basic body going on. Mess with the bull, you get the horns. Old school, I love it. Yes, very Island of Dr. Moreau here. Brush. Let's do it. Let's crank this up. Crank up this flow. Maybe use my my pen. Start to blend that like so. Because we just want that top pattern. And then we'll give it a fun tail and other things. There we go. Boom. All right. Uh, let's try something really fast. Because we have two animals. Actually, I need to maybe bend. I could bend this into into place if I want to. Um, maybe I'll convert this into another smart object real fast. And then we'll go to uh, Puppet Warp or whatever you want to do. Maybe Puppet Warp isn't for you, but I feel like this will work. We can kind of bend this in like so, right? Just to make sure it sort of hugs that body as you can see here. Right, we can kind of tweak this a little bit more. Maybe not. Get over there. There we go. We got a little bit of shell. It's not matching though, right? So there's still some matching that we need to do. Uh, yeah, it's. This is, I guess, our armadillo's hairy, or is it a little baby armadillo? I don't know. Well, something like that. So we'll take this. We'll take this deer. I will name these layers at this point. We have deer and our armadillo, and let's just see how this works, because uh, we want to match these colors, and uh, we can do that manually. But let's just try our one-click solution really fast. Usually, this is used for say like matching the back, like the, your subject with your background, which will do that as well. Um, but let's just try this. Let's go into um, neural filters and uh, go from there. Order right in here, and uh, we'll go to harmonization again. We use this to blend background like foreground with a background or subject with a background. We'll turn this on and we're just going to see what happens. We'll select our layer, sure enough, that's why I named it. We're going to go down to deer. Remember, I'm on the armadillo layer, selecting the deer layer because I want to match the colors. Like, is it going to harmonize? And we'll just find out in a second because again, this is master class, we're all going to learn here, huh? There we go. No, and no, it doesn't do it. Hmm, I was really hoping for, ooh, this is why. I bet you anything this is why. Because there's all this white. So um, we could kind of explore that. So let's click cancel. Don't mind me. I'm going to take this, jump it, rasterize, <clears throat> go back in to neural filters. And we're just going to go ahead and see if my theory works. So the problem was in my deer layer, I now have deer copy. Let's just see what happens. So my original deer image just had a big white background. I think that white background, it was reading the whole background, was ignoring the mask. Ah, it kind of turns out the same, so never mind. Uh, but either way, we can start to adjust the strength because maybe we don't want it that strong. What we do want is we want to introduce some more yellow um, maybe make it more saturated, maybe take down the strength, but we can start to tweak these dials and have it process uh, as it's doing right now. So it's blending a little bit better. Anyways, I was really hoping that this would just kill it, but it all just depends on the images. Uh, Colby, awesome, buddy. Ah, oh, I hope I could answer your question. I'm usually a vector person, so I don't know, but does the puppet warp mess with the pixels in the photo? Um, no, it does not because um, uh, it's a smart object, 
But yes, it will, if you're stretching something, it's gonna start duplicating some pixels because you're stretching it. But underneath, it's a smart object, so everything is gonna be fine. Right, but that does actually look a little bit better. We'll just click OK and kind of move on. So there that is. I added it actually as a layer, not as a smart layer, but let's kind of try this manually. So we'll go to this one. We still want it to match. There's a couple other ways we could do things too. If you go under um, adjustments, check this out. Another way to match, match the color, we'll just rasterize this. That's why this isn't good, which is why I don't show this a lot. But there's also this image adjustments match color. So this is what we had before we had sort of neural filters. So match color. Uh, from there, sure enough, the source is going to be the same file that's totally not saved. Right? So we'll go to untitled one, and then we'll go to our dear copy. So this is the idea. Sort of steal the color uh, from the deer and apply it to that back. And uh, we'll see what happens. Boom. Ooh, it did quite a good job. I'm kind of into that. I was, I was, I was skeptical, right? But I did it. There we go. Have that kind of blending in. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, for you purists out there, we could uh, select this armadillo layer, and it would just be a matter of doing everything manually. So, might do a hue and saturation. We would clip it just to there. Ba ba. Let's. I kind of want to move on too, by the way. I want to do some fun stuff. So manually tweaking this, maybe increasing uh, the saturation. We want to get rid of that blue. So there's kind of some blue from the sky. So we'll just change that blues. Uh, maybe want to either take that down all the way. Um, and here are the blues that it's picking. So I could say, you know what? Grab more of the blues, right? So whatever blues are out there, grab them take that saturation all the way down or all the way up. Let's see if it's even, see there's the blues. If I crank that up a lot, you can see, oh, there is actually blue in there and we need to get rid of it. So we could take that saturation all the way down or we could shift the color entirely more to uh, that yellow. So I'm shifting the color. Maybe we wanna grab some more, just kind of adjust accordingly. Um, but also we would take the saturation down, uh, maybe the lightness, you guys get the idea. So I'm just kind of, this is manually sort of tweaking these colors. You could hardly even see it. Ooh, I just noticed this too. This is fun. Okay, so check this out. It never really occurred to me. I kind of didn't pay any mind to this bar right here, but we're in hue and set. Oh, you could use curves. Thank you very much. Totally use curves. Uh, but right in here, this is like, uh, the source and this is the after, like the before and then the after. So as I change that, see how that color shifts? Because I'm saying, hey, for that blue, make it more of a golden color. And sure enough, it says, hey, what, whatever was blue is now going to be this golden color and might dip into the green a little bit. Fascinating. But again, it's hardly even grabbing that. Anyways, that's fine. You guys get the idea. Let's jump in. If you want to use curves, yeah, you could do that. Curves get tricky, right? Because uh, you're just kind of bending this line, kind of unsure what's happening. You could hit auto, see what it does there. I probably jacked with my auto settings too much. Sure enough, I did. We could always roll that back. Um, and uh, what I'll often use is I will use, uh, let's actually go into a couple more things, brightness, contrast. Right, take down the contrast because it's really contrasty. Uh, so many things I just want to show. Levels, right? We have levels. We could see the levels of this current image, at least what it's clipped to, and just take that down a little bit because you can see there's these extreme sort of uh, lights in there and darks that we just need to kind of clip it a little bit. Okay, one more. Are you ready for this? Jack Watson's in the house. What's up? So happy to have you guys here. We have a full day. I've just been playing one thing. I'm going to show you the last thing. Once I've done this once, I'm going to do it a lot faster, um, and it's just going to be applied to many different images. So let's do this one more time, because the short of it is, I'm like, hey, I really just need to tint this um, kind of more of a, a gold color. So yeah, let's do that right in here. 
Again, these are your um, all your brightness levels. This you're getting to color, right? And then you have additional like effects. But I'd jump in and try photo filter, right? Because overall, oh, it actually already did. You see how fast that was? Here's the before, here's the after. Let's increase the density, but you could see it's crank it up. What I do here is I would go to color and then I could actually select that color, right? You. Um, and this is what happens too. Let's cancel that. Let's click right here. Sometimes it makes this mask, but let's click right here. We want to go to color. And now I think, there we go. Now it's working. Anytime, by the way, you ready for this? Reverb mic. Oh, grape ape. Ah, oh, reverb mic. Let's hang out. I just like all this nostalgic stuff you're throwing at me. I'm totally into it. Uh, but this is what happens. Sometimes if you if it's not sampling correctly, it's because you're on this layer mask. Because sometimes it defaults to this layer mask. And you're like, oh, why is it not able to pick the colors? Just click right on your actual adjustment layer. And then when you go to color, you're able to select uh, that gold color. So anyways, it's kind of beep, beep, beep bopping around, right? We can crank it up some more. Really whatever we want to do in here. Click OK adjust the density overall. So what are the differences we have here? We've really made a mess is what we've done. Let's get rid of these. A lot is going on. But either way, this is a sort of non-destructive. Let's bring those back. Bring it back, bring it back. All right. Like that is not bad for the short amount of time we have. So this is the um, non-destructive way. We noticed our one-click method, boom, worked out so well. Essentially, that's what I was trying to match, and it did such a good job. So you can see I need to add more yellow, so this photo filter, we can crank that up more and start to adjust that color more as well. Um, but that's that did a lot of the heavy lifting, I would say. Overall. So cool, take that, we'll take this. Uh, we can convert it to a smart object and we still have the armadillo back. Everything is uh, in one layer. Or we could even just use this one. I typically make that a smart object. And let's just run with it. Let's move on, people. All right. Oh, yeah. The band hammer is always coming. There's never time to save. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's get this party moving. What if we want to take any sort of other animal? Let's take this. Uh, I don't even know what it is. I'd have to search. Is it a, I, obviously like some ape in captivity. We could see that, or at least being tracked in some way, shape, or form. We'll double click, we'll clean this up a little bit really fast, and I'm gonna get moving the second half of this master class. Uh, usually click outside, drag down, right? We're just grabbing some of that edge, that whiteness. Yeah, let's get rid of it. Let's really dig in there. Okay, and then we'll choke it, right? We'll shift the edge in. That's usually what I'll do is shift the edge in. I'm not gonna le need a lot of this either, right? But we'll click okay, that looks good. Uh, double click, jump, Ooh, sorry about that. I don't need to double click. I do need to get rid of this tag so we can jump in here. Let's do this really fast. Uh, Content aware, fill. Oh, let's grab this one. Okay, that looks good, done. Convert to smart object. Mask, B for brush, increase the size, get rid of that. This might be a head I use, it might not be, right? But again, we can just take this, shrink it down. Again, since it's a smart object, we're not going to lose any quality on this. And uh, again, this could be the new head. So let's drag it to the top. Work it, work it, people. This 
is getting weird. Boom. Puppet warp again. Because we want to maybe adjust slapping on this interesting weird head. What are we even doing today? This is freaking, this is getting freaky. Right. Again, am I crazy about that? No, maybe not. What can we do? We'll just save this as um, monkey head. Because we've got a plethora of other animals. Um, thinking back to what you guys, you guys said, there was a, ooh, I'd love to add some stripes. Let's add a tail. I think we need a cool tail for sure, right? Because we're just trying to make an imaginary fun new animal. And we want to try to find the most interesting heads. Even for this one, by the way, let's do a command J. Let's rasterize that layer. Since we know this works so fast, we're going to go into match color. Because I'm just so impressed how well it did it, the matching. Um, in, in college, you're combining animals but with pencil and pens. Oh, back in the day. I love it. That works too. I feel like it's a good it's a good exercise. Look at that. Actually, that did a quite a good job. Um, again, you only have one chance to kind of change the colors in here, as you can see. Um, because again, this is destructive. We could maybe blend it with the original. But you know, what, let's just call it a day. Let's click OK. Done. Boom. Deer. Boom. Oh, let's not do that. I, you know, people say creative creativity is all about like combining things that you d wouldn't normally combine, right? The, these are all, what I'm doing here is just like easy to combine type. Uh, just low hanging fruit, that's what this is. Very low hanging fruit for creativity. It's like, oh, let's do an animal mashup. Right. What I do want to, what I want to do with this is, um, we need to give it a tint and a style that's all its own. So we'll get into that uh, later. But that's where I'd use sort of some sort of color lookups or something. So again, just the start. We'll get a unique tail in here. I personally think we need an alligator tail. Guess what? We'll again showing you all the different ways to do things. Free stock search pro. Boom. Oh, good call. Uh, Nima, thank you so much. That's very smart. You, you think we need to keep the ear of the deer? I think you're exactly right. Good call. That's what I'm talking about, right? Like maybe one of these ears or something. I like that idea. I like the idea of taking parts of a different face and uh, doing something interesting with it. So we'll jump in here. We'll grab that really fast. Let's grab both. It might not be perfect, but again, we're just experimenting. It's uh, good to limit yourself with time if you can. Uh, what is this, deer? Ear. Command J. Boom. You know, if you just like work fast, then uh, you can kind of quickly decide what is working and what isn't. And, um, Kind of stays fresher longer, I feel. Also, step away. If it's not looking good, then step away. You guys are really my eyes and ears. Oops. You guys are sort of one removed from uh, from me, who's so close to this. Um, so there we go. We have the ear on that side. We have this ear on this side. Kind of move that around or whatever. Zip. Whatever, you get the idea. Oh, it needs horns and all sorts of fun things. All right, okay. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, okay, I like the idea of the alligator tail, so do I. Using free stock search to pro. Just another resource. Ooh, ooh. 
Oh yeah. I mainly like this eye. Look at that eye. Look at how cool that is. Oh, so nice. So here, this is searching uh, Unsplash, Pexels. Those are the two main ones that I see for this particular plugin. Um, but yeah, uh, doesn't quite give me the, I might need this leg. Hey, let's grab it. Oh, here's a tail. Maybe grab this tail. So let's do that. Boom. Just downloading some images. Uh, so yeah, it's grabbing from some different websites. That works out pretty well. Uh, yeah, buddy. Hello, my friend. Boom. This will be tough. Oh, it's kind of getting it. One more. I love it. Just using some shortcuts to combine all these into my file. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. All righty. Thank you so much for your patience, everybody, and for hanging out with me today, because you guys are really helpful in kind of determining what we use here. Right, there's the tail. Okay, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna scale this stuff up. I'm not even sure how big this file is. It's fine. Scale it up to 50. Boom. There we go, let's just make it larger. That's right, this is gonna get a little cra It's gonna get a little weird, people. this, get rid of that. Ah, uh, select our lasso tool. You know what? The two places where the lasso tool just has whole new meaning, just like takes things to the next level. One, if you ever get it like a Cintiq or even just a Wacom tablet, it's just a huge game changer. Two, um, the lasso tool when you're using Photoshop on the iPad is amazing as well, right? Because what is your Apple Pencil? It's like having a Wacom tablet. Okay, checking the time, checking comments. Save, great idea. Bah! Drink coffee. It needs horns, it needs all sorts of fun things. Right, here's a, again, situation where, ooh, this this came up. I'm so glad this came up. I hit save. How many animals are in here? It's like, as many are on the arc? I don't know. <laughs> but look, it's like, whoa, Paul, I know this is over a, it's a gig, right? It should be a gig. If it's over a gig, um, it's gonna wanna change it to a Photoshop big file. I'm not, sure the exact details on why, but that's what a PSB is, Photoshop big. How long was that meeting? What are we gonna call this big Photoshop file? Photoshop big. <laughs> Neil, you can't be from Denver, I'm from Denver. Good to have you, Neil uh, and Muriel as well. Okay, so there we go. Make it happen. Get in there. Get in there. Uh, let's just go fast with the spot healing brush tool, huh? We don't have time, people. Shoo. Take care of it. Take care of it. Take care of it. Take care of it. Boom, boom, boom. Get rid of that. Ah, don't need that grass. I need the pure tail, right? Yeah, yeah, do it. Really destroy that. Uh, B for brush. Selecting. And... Right click. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, that's why I am on. I hit B for brush. And uh, there we go. Hurry, Paul, hurry. Increase the hardness. Let's 
Take that like so. We got it going on. All about sort of blending images. There we go. Some of that craziness we can get rid of. Okay. Smart object. Puppet warp. Pins. Ba ba ba. Ba ba. Zip. 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 You get the idea. I know his leg is there. Guess what? You're not going to notice later on. Uh, um, yeah. Perfection is a, can be um, not a good thing sometimes. It just depends. Because people are going to be seeing this with fresh eyes. They're going to be like, whoa, this is crazy. And they might not notice that technically there's a leg right here. Plus, again, I'm just doing it uh, for me, for fun. But my goal is to hide that. In fact, let's hide it right there. It's going to do the same thing. Let's do Command J. How's everybody doing? Uh, Daniel's also in Denver. Fantastic. Ooh, Daniel, where are you exactly in Denver? Give me your exact address. Just kidding. Tell me where you are. Just kidding. Dear copy, just matching the color. We're going to see what happens. Boom. Oh, it did it, right? Kind of match that color. Again, we're the crazy taxidermist at this point. Um, just blending things together and getting ridiculous. Right? But so far, that is working. We can go to this. Um, when it comes to brushes, I actually could get into... Um, using like a hairbrush here, but we're just gonna go ahead and just use a regular feather. But if you wanted to get a little more specific, you use a hairbrush. Ooh, there's a spot right there that I've missed too. All right. Okay. I know, it did such a good job blending it. Like, I wanted color harmonization to uh, give me some of those similar results, and it uh, did not quite do it. Okay, we definitely need a different background, right? We need a platform background. Let's just go out there. Let's find uh, display pedestal. I don't even know how to spell it. There we go. There we go. Okay, something like that might work. We could use some old wood paneling. That's another thing I would search for because all of this is way too futuristic. So let's go wood. And all I'm doing is I'm still searching free, by the way. All right. Oh, I gotta hurry, pedestal. Uh, Let's see what we get. Wood paneling office old. We're gonna switch to images. I want an old, scary looking office. That I'm not currently finding. I might be able to take something like this and use it. Uh, 
All right. Let me know how you guys are doing. Yeah, it needs to be on a platform, just kind of something it sits on. Um, and again, we're kind of struggling with the, you know, maybe it's like in an office, like in the corner, not really an office, but like in an, a very old museum, right? So let's just try this. We'll just, let's do um, old museum. We'll try that. Yeah, you. thank you so much. Good call, RB. Uh, let's do old museum wood. Let's see what we get. Ooh, this stuff's fun. Oh, this is already licensed, so let me go ahead and take that. Because we could even make this look like, oh yeah, this sort of thing. This is what I'm looking for. Something just fantastic like that stuff. Ooh, this as well. Perfect. Right? That's what we're going for. Just FYI. But also check in the time because I only have like five minutes left. Like this stuff. Right? You guys catching a vision for it? That one's too fake. It's like, yeah, I could, I, if I could, I could make things look fake myself. <laughs> um, this even, like, I don't know. Like, I'm looking at the sizes of things. So this is just gonna take more time. Something like this is really awesome, right? So don't mind me as I just, oh, like this kind of, okay, you guys get the idea. I've downloaded a couple just for inspiration. Yeah, Cabinet of Curiosities. You ever listen to that? Uh, what is his name? Who does Cabinet of Curiosities? I'm trying to blank. It's a podcast. Aaron Menke. That's his name. Very good uh, podcast. So, all right. We got what we needed. We got some inspiration. And we'll get this going. So much to do still. I'm just gonna use this because I think this is just a better background overall that hits kind of the feeling of what we're looking for. Right, you get the idea. In fact, we could even put it right down here. How about that? Like it's really alive. How fun. So much more to do. I bit off more than I can chew, but I have so many resources now. This is going to be really fun, uh, you know, as I continue to work on this today. Uh, I'll try to get it to match this lighting really fast. Again, we'll move it down over here. This is a case where we could try to use. Let's take all of this. Let's convert it to, oops, smart object. And uh, let's take our background. We'll just call this background. And let's use a neural filter. Hold on, did I just not, did I just undo that? There we go. Okay, there's our animal. We have that background. Let's just see what neural filters do at this point. Sorry, RB, I smashed my keyboards. Like, good thing I don't work in an actual office anymore because I think I was so annoying because I just I just pound on the keyboard too much. Like, it owes me money. I'm like, it's late on rent or something. So it's processing it. It's going to try to match it to the background. We really just need the lights and the darks from it. There's another ways to do this. Of course, levels. Um, okay, so that did, that did an okay job. Hey, let's do it. So what we can do is we could turn that into a smart filter. So this could be our starting point. I can crank that up some more, or what I could do is I can manually kind of tweak it. So basically doing a combination of those two methods earlier, because we used, we tried neural filters, and uh, we tried adjustment layers as well. So there they are.
It needs so much more work, but you guys get the idea. I only have an hour. Now I have 15 seconds left. Uh, but there it is. Hopefully you're into... Uh, what I have going on so far. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. Stay tuned as I work on this more and I post to the, the social medias. So thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate you guys hanging out. Hopefully you learned something. Um, I know I did as well, like I do every time with you guys. So thank you so much. I'll be uh, creeping in the background, but uh, I'll be around all day today. And I think Terry White's back. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.